Okay, in today's lab, we're doing gas laws. So, gas laws. So part one is Boyle's law. And part two is the ideal gas law. Okay, so here's the lab report form that we're doing for this week's lab. Um, and what I want you to notice about the lab report form is there's lots of information in the actual question, uh, in the actual chart and question itself of the lab report form. Now, I won't be able to actually, you won't be able to actually see what's written on here because uh, my little webcam doesn't really work that well for focusing in on small, uh, small writing. So I'm going to actually write in the margins what these mean. But if you actually read what it says in the lab report form itself, so for instance, this says one half original pressure, and it says half times A above, where this is labeled A and this is labeled capital B, capital A, capital A in chart one, and so on. So there's a lot of information like that written on the lab report form itself. Um, the reason why there's a lot of information on the lab report form itself is because um, the, the actual experiment is actually pretty straightforward, but the, uh, the actual write-up of the lab is actually uh, so has some very kind of difficult, um, difficult uh, uh, calculations in it. Okay, so um, let's first look at Part 1, Boyle's Law. Okay, so Boyle's Law is that equation that we have where you have volume 1 divided by volume 2 is equal to pressure 2 divided by pressure 1. Another way that you can write this is volume is indirectly proportional to pressure, where this is the symbol for directly proportional, and because I've got it uh, 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 inverted for the pressure, this means that it's indirectly proportional to the pressure. Um, and if you remember what this means is if you've got like a balloon and you squeeze the balloon, then uh, as the volume decreases, the pressure increases. Or as the pressure increases, the volume decreases. So that's sort of, uh, sort of idea. It's not directly proportional, it's inversely proportional. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to experimentally measure volumes and pressures and so that we can come up with a plot for Boyle's Law. The setup that we're going to use to do this is actually going to be this little setup. Now, um, this setup is a demonstration setup, so everybody in the lab doesn't get their own little set that looks like this. Everybody actually looks at this same thing uh, for the entire class. And um, so this, this entire thing is on plexiglass, and this is the gauge that measures the pressure. It's actually in PSI. And it's connected by this little metal uh, uh, connectors to a piece of tubing. And the tubing is connected to a syringe. So here's the, the syringe body, and here's the little plunger of the syringe. Uh, right here, what we have is a thermometer. We do measure the thermometer because we, we do use the thermometer to measure the temperature as we're going because we would like to keep the temperature consistent throughout the experiment. But this is not really connected to anything else. It's just the thermometer hanging out there. And the way we're going to do this is, and I've got this little syringe that's not really the normal syringe that you use for this. This I just got from my dentist. So you've got your syringe, and what you're going to do is uh, you're going you're going to connect this up, and then you're going to pull. And when you pull, uh, you increase the volume and you decrease the pressure. When you push in, you decrease the volume but you increase the pressure. So you're actually going to look at the relationship between the pressure that you measure on this gauge here in PSI and the volume here. Now, what you uh, might notice is that the volume of the syringe is actually almost the same as the volume of the actual gauge that we're measuring the pressure in. So it's gas not just in the syringe itself, but also in the gauge itself as well. And what you find is that you actually have uh, you actually have to take into account this volume 
and this volume within the little metal fittings plus the volume of gas in this little tubing and the little gas that's in this little uh, tip of the syringe because the only thing that we can actually measure by adjusting the syringe plunger is just this section right here. Uh, this picture is actually out of, uh, I just uh, made a bigger uh, printout of the of the picture that's in your lab book. So you have a, a picture almost identical to this in your in your actual lab book. Okay, so we can measure the volume of the gas within the syringe, but how do we measure the volume of the gas inside the gauge, inside this little metal piece, inside the tubing, inside that little section between uh, the, the tubing and when the syringe volume actually starts. So one thing you might think is, oh, well, why don't we just put some water in there and we'll dump all the water out and then we'll measure the volume of the water and then we'd be able to get the volume inside the gauge and inside the tubing and that little piece. It'd be kind of hard to do that. Uh, it'd be hard to get the water in and out. But also, because this is actually a gauge that you're using to measure the pressure, you don't really want to put water in there and mess up the the, uh, the mechanism of the of the the gauge that measures the pressure. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use a very nice little uh, uh, simple way of measuring this by a little bit of fancy algebra. So you don't actually have to do the measurement of this volume by using an experimental method. Okay, so. How are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to say that um, we have we have the uh, the volume total. Oh, oh, but by the way, uh, I just wanted to point out that the way we normally do this experiment is we have one of this set up. We have it in front of the room. I usually select three people from from the students to actually do the actual experiment. We get a bunch of numbers, we put it up on the board, and then everybody in the entire class gets the same set of numbers for their, uh, for their calculation and for their, their Boyle's Law plot. So I'm going to do that. I'm not actually going to use the, this, uh, I'm not actually going to do the experiment. I just have some numbers from a previous semester, so I'm just going to give you the numbers from previous semester. But I'm going to give you the numbers that you uh, get experimentally, and then everybody in uh, the Tuesday um, March 24th class, the class that I'm missing, everybody who's doing the lab in that class will be able to use the numbers that I give you. All right, so here we go. So we're trying to figure out the volume within that little gauge area. So when we're talking about the total volume of the gas, the total volume is going to be volume within the syringe plus volume of other. And what is our volume other? Well, our volume other is the volume within the gauge, the, uh, the thing that you're using to measure the, the pressure in, plus the volume in the tubing, plus volume in the fittings, the metal fittings, plus etc. So we're measuring all of that volume by uh, we're considering that to be volume other. So how are we going to get the volume of the other part without actually doing an experimental measurement of that by doing a little bit of fancy algebra? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to consider this. Now, if you have no uh, volume in the syringe, you're going to have zero for volume syringe. So this is when the syringe is completely empty. Um, volume one is going to equal volume where the syringe is completely empty, zero, plus volume other. Okay, and we're going to associate a pressure with this, pressure one. Um, pressure one is going to be associated with your chart one, part A. 
Um, now, then what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the pressure by a half. By We're going to take this pressure, we're going to take pressure 1, and we're going to divide the pressure by half. And we're going to set that as pressure 2. So pressure 2 is equal to 1 half pressure 1. This is what's in your chart 1, part B. Okay, and then associated with pressure 2, we have volume 2. So volume 2 is equal to the volume syringe that you can read off. I think I left off an R there. Volume syringe plus volume other. And P2, as you said, is equal to one half of P1. Okay, so we've got that. Now, this little derivation that I'm doing to explain what the volume other is, you're not responsible for. I don't actually ask any question about it on the lab report form. But I just think it's kind of neat, and it sort of explains what you're doing. Otherwise, you'll be, you're, you'll be sitting there and wondering, why, why are we doing this chart one? What does that have to do with anything that we're doing? And why are we adding this stray number to all of our volumes that we're using in our chart? So this explains what, where that's coming from. So I would say, don't worry about this in the lab report form. It is possible that I could ask you something about it in the course of doing the uh, uh, in the course of doing the um, the mini final. But for the purposes of your lab report form, there's no question in your lab report form that deals with this. All right, so we've got volume one that's associated with pressure one. You've got volume two that's associated with pressure two. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put these into Boyle's Law because the whole point of this experiment is to do Boyle's Law. And what was our Boyle's Law? Our Boyle's Law is... V1 over V2 is equal to P2 over P1. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put in our uh, equation for V1. So here's our equation for V1. And remember, we're trying to solve for V other. So here's our V1. Here's our V2. And here's our pressure 1. And here is our pressure 2. So we're going to plug that into our equation where V1 is going to be put in with 0 plus V other. V2 is going to be V syringe plus V other. Uh, and then P2 and P1 are 1 half P1. And that, those are all going to go in. All right, so here we go. So we're going to plug everything in. So then we're going to get... Oh, I'm having a little difficulty with my papers. I'm sort of all, all out of out of whack here. Okay, here we go. All right. So then we're going to get volume one is zero plus volume other divided by volume two is volume in your syringe at half pressure plus volume other is equal to P2 is 1 half P1, and P1 is P1. Okay, so there we are. We've got a nice little equation there. Now, of course, if there's a zero, we can just leave that out, so then this just becomes volume other. So let me just rewrite this. Nice little fancy bit of uh, algebra. So you have zero... Oh, sorry. We're going to get rid of the zero, so we're just going to say volume other over volume syringe at half pressure plus volume other is equal to, and of course, look what happens here. We've got pressure 1 and half pressure 1. You can cancel out pressure 1 because they're the same number. So then this becomes 1 half. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we are going to... Um, 
do a little bit of rearranging. And we're going to rearrange it by multiplying both sides by 2. So then I'm going to get 2 times volume other divided by volume syringe plus volume other. I think I misspelled syringe is equal to 2 over 2, or 1. Okay, now, I'm actually going to move this 2 inside the parentheses and just attach it to the volume other, because if I have 2 times this thing in the, in the entire parentheses, then I can just write it as 2 times volume other. And then I'm also going to multiply both sides by this stuff on the bottom, so I'm going to multiply both sides by this. So then I'm going to add, so I've got 1 on the other side, so when I move it over to the other side, by multiplying both sides, I'm going to get volume syringe plus volume other. And now I've got 2 volume other, and I've got volume other. This is the same number. So I'm actually going to move it over to the other side by subtracting volume other from both sides of the equation. So when I subtract volume other from both sides of the equation, I'm going to get 2 times volume other minus volume other is equal to volume syringe at half pressure plus volume other minus volume other. And of course, my volume others will cancel each other out. And when you have two volume other and you subtract off one volume other, then your answer on the left side is going to be one volume other. So this side is volume other. Because two volume other minus one volume other is one volume other. And then this means that volume other is equal to volume of the syringe. So what this means is the volume of the syringe at half pressure is equal to volume other, where volume other is the volume within the gauge, the tubing, the fittings, and so on. So there you are. So what this means is when you get to our little chart in our little lab report form, so here's our little lab report form. Here's our little lab report form. Okay, let me zoom in for a minute, although when I zoom in, you can't really read what the chart says, so I'll have to write it down for you. Okay, so here's my, and this is my best effort at uh, at getting a, a, a nice uh, a focused piece of paper, although it's not really focused. Okay, now, um, right here, we have pressure at zero cc volume, so this is the, the pressure at 0 cc. So this is uh, pressure 1. So this is pressure at volume syringe is equal to 0. Okay? This is going to be half of pressure 1, so I'm going to take half of whatever pressure I have in that first part of the chart. We're going to divide it in half and come up with a number. This is a calculated number. And then we're going to write out the volume at half pressure. So this is going to be the volume at whatever pressure that turns out to be. Okay? So let me go ahead and give you what those numbers are from, um, from data that I previously obtained. So that pressure is going to be, I'm going to give you for A, the pressure, this is, this is A, B, C, D. These are uppercase letters, and this is in, this is chart one of your lab report form. Okay, so you're going to put in here 14.9 the pressure at half um, original pressure is 7.5 PSI. Volume at half pressure is going to be 5.0.
and the volumes are all in milliliters. Okay, so there you are. So I don't know if you can read that. Let me zoom out. Oh, maybe uh, it's a little hard to read, isn't it? Okay, so this.